dig up a past, I swore. Stay buried. You will always be a monster. Ares! I have nothing more to hide. The ghost of Sparta had been born. Who blew the horn? The biggest unanswered question in the God Over community until today. The answer has literally been right underneath our noses the whole time. Just think about it. Freya said that no one spoke the serpent's tongue. You know, we actually talked to the world serpent. You did? An exaggeration. I'm good with languages, even ones I've never heard before. But when he talks, I can't understand any of it. Sadly, no one can. He speaks a dead tongue. She said that the serpent spoke an ancient language. But that's not true, because we know that Yomengander is from the future. The world serpent's fight with Thor sent him back in time, and so quite frankly, this means the serpent literally cannot speak a so-called dead tongue. But in fact, a language that is yet to exist. Come here. What else did the serpent tell you when you spoke? Kind of sounded important. I'm sure it's nothing. He just said the boy seemed familiar to him. Me? That's impossible. No, I quite agree. Unless, perhaps, he refers to something yet to be. It is said that when Jormungandr and Thor battle at Ragnarok, their clash so violently shakes the Tree of Life that it splinters, casting the serpent backward through time, even before his own birth. What? That is madness. Well, I did say not to concern yourself. <laughs> that is why no one, not even the gods, besides Mimir and Atreus, can speak to the world serpent. Mimir learned to speak to the serpent by spending time with him. Mimir even claims that the serpent is a great conversationalist. Get me to Tyr's temple in the Lake of the Nine, and I'll get you to Jotunheim as promised. We know the temple. What's there? Only the last living giant in Midgard. Who better to tell us the way? The world serpent? Wait, do you know how to talk to him? Indeed. He speaks an obscure tongue more ancient even than these mountains. None are left in Midgard who speak it. Except, of course, for me. You do? It's true. You wouldn't know it to look at him, but Jormungandr is a sparkling conversationalist. Just like Atreus learned to speak the serpent's language from the few interactions he had with him, the smartest man alive, Mimir, must have done the same. It's just Mimir must have naturally come to the conclusion that the language Jormungandr speaks is an ancient one and not a language that is yet to exist. Besides, we know from the game that Mimir has never talked to the serpent sober. <laughs> What is it? Oh, nothing to be concerned about. Kind of mad for a moment. Now that you thought I said you were friends of Odin, you'll forgive me. I've never spoken the ancient tongue sober. Which not only supports my idea that Mimir used to spend time with Jormungandr, even if he was drunk, but can also help us understand why Mimir never asked the serpent the, the nature of the language he speaks. With that being said, you might think, oh, so if Atreus and Mimir are the only people who are capable to converse with the serpent, and the only reason anyone would blow the horn is to talk to the serpent, then it must be either Mimir or Atreus who blew the horn. But Mimir and Atreus were with us at the time. Somebody just called the serpent. So could it be Atreus or Loki from the future, or Mimir from the future? Maybe, but people are missing the bigger picture here. Why does the horn exist? Why did Tyr build the horn? Because if you think about it, when the horn was being built, no one knew of the serpent. The serpent came out of nowhere and flooded the temple after the horn was made, leaving Tyr's temple and the horn under the water. This means Tyr knew that the serpent was coming before anyone else, and that is why he built the horn. Tyr knew that Jormungandr would come to Midgard and he wanted a way to contact him when he did, and so he built the horn. But how did Tyr know? Who told him? Was it Tyr who blew the horn on our way to Freya's house, or could it be someone else? Someone who knew the serpent was coming. Someone who foresaw all the events of God of War 2018 before it happened. Someone who waited for the exact time to blow the horn. Someone who must have killed themselves on purpose to kickstart Ragnarok. Someone like Faye. 
You're probably thinking, what is this guy talking about? What did he have for breakfast? But just bear with me. Why would anyone blow the horn at the same exact time Atreus was out unconscious? Just when the world was covered in clouds and struck by lightning. Just when Kratos and Atreus had opened Tyr's vault. It must have been Faye. Either from the future or from the past. Or maybe she faked her own death, who knows. But maybe she called the serpent to make sure that Kratos and Atreus were on the right path or to check on her son who has fallen ill and she dearly loves, or to tell the serpent that when the time comes to let Kratos and Atreus into his stomach to retrieve Mimir's eye. She must have called that serpent at that time because she knew the only person who would have asked questions about who blew the horn was Atreus, and Atreus was out cold. It could have been outside of Faye's plan for the serpent to eat Thor's statue, so, I don't know, but this this makes sense to me. We know time travel is going to play a vital role in God of War Ragnarok, and we know Santa Monica is getting up, is setting up things in a way that will allow us to see more of Faye. And maybe this is it. You tell me. Hold on. You're probably wondering why my voice suddenly changed and why the audio quality suddenly became different. And that's because, um... I'm recording this at a completely different time with completely different equipment. As you can tell from the title of the video, this is a re-upload of a, of a theory that I uploaded four months ago about who blew the horn. And now I've actually played the game, whereas four months ago I didn't play God of War Ragnarok. And now that I've seen the events of Ragnarok unfold, it doesn't make much sense to me that Faye was the one who blew the horn in God of War 2018. I still believe in a lot of the things that I say in this theory. Like, why would Tyr build the horn if he didn't know uh, about the serpent's existence? Why would anyone blow the horn when Atreus was out cold? And maybe it wasn't in the giant's plan. You know, the plan from the mural that depicts everything that's going to happen in God of War 2018. Maybe it wasn't in the plan for the serpent to eat Thor's statue. And maybe that's why there's a little bit of uh, a complication, I guess you could call it. But I don't think it's Faye anymore. Yes, Faye knew everything was going to happen before everything happened, but you know who else knew this? Angerboda. Angerboda literally has the same shrine in Ironwood where she lives. So she too knew what was going to happen to Kratos and Atreus before the events of God of War 2018 even happened. But here's the catch. Angerboda was obsessed. She was convinced that everything on that shrine had to happen and will happen. Oh, don't worry about it. It happens to everyone. That happens to everyone? Not the wolf part, but getting scared about your future. That cannot be my future. It says I serve Odin and my father dies. There's just no way. Look, this is the only way things turn out. The sooner you accept that, the better. So when she saw the serpent eat Thor's statue, she must have panicked, and that's why she talked to the serpent to, I don't know, persuade him or convince him to allow Kratos and Atreus to venture inside the snake and reobtain Mimir's eye so that the plan might resume, so that it, everything goes to plan. So that Kratos and Atreus reobtain Mimir's eye and actually go to Jotunheim, spread the ashes, yada yada yada, God of Ragnarok happens. So, it's not Faye, I truly believe it was Angerboda. Angerboda must have been keeping an eye on everything. And that's implied in God of War Ragnarok. She knew who Atreus is before Atreus even introduced himself. And she was convinced that everything on that mural had to happen and should happen and will happen. So, this makes a lot of sense to me. It must have been Angerboda. Anyway, back to the outro cutscene. This rune opens the bridge to Helheim. When you are there, do not under any circumstances cross the Bridge of the Damned. There is no road back. Understand? Boy. Hey, Mille. You must hurry. Through my garden, there's a path leading to my boat. Take it. Return home. Dig up your past. Do whatever you need to do. Just bring me back the Bridgekeeper's heart. And your son may survive. <laughs>